Hey guys, Jeff Beck at the church again. Today we are here to talk about plumbing, specifically how to convert from copper to PEX. Now here's what we're doing. We're tearing, taking our two piece bathroom, making it a three, adding laundry facilities to get occupancy so that we can sell the church as a one bedroom, one bathroom, 4,000 square foot home. <laughs> but the challenge today is how to convert your plumbing. Now, if you're in this video and you're watching, no, we're not using SharkBite. Here's why. SharkBite still only offers a 25 year warranty. I love the product, but I can't use it inside a closed wall because anything that's closed in a wall, I still rely on the rule of 50. If it isn't gonna be a 50 year product, then you shouldn't be burying it, okay? So, if you're thinking about your next project and you're looking at SharkBite as an option, maybe think again, because if you're gonna get inspected, you might fail your inspection, depending where you live. Today we're gonna show you how to do it the old fashioned way. We're gonna pull out a torch and teach you how to make the conversion so that you can have a 100 year water supply cycle instead of a 25. All right, so the first rule when you're gonna convert from copper to PEX is turn off all the water. Not just turn it off at the source, but open up the faucets and the drains, first, second, third story, whatever. You wanna empty the lines of water. No matter what you do, there's always gonna be a little water left in these lines usually, so be prepared to get wet. It's uh, usually only a few ounces of water. Now there's a couple ways to do this. We're working in a tight space, so I'm just gonna use this little mini cutter. And it's a bit of a pain in the butt to work with. Grabbing a wrench to turn the handle here might be beneficial if you don't have enough finger strength. Basically, we just have a cutting wheel under compression and you just roll it around in circles and it score cuts the copper. Oof. Okay, turn into turn and then turn the wheel a quarter, increase the depth. <clears throat> so these are really handy in tight spaces, but it's so much easier to use the wrench to turn the handle. There we go. And we're through. Fantastic. Now, that actually goes to the sink. Push it right through to the other side because it's no good to us there. And what we really need to do now is get rid of the level of the water that's in that pipe. Or we're gonna be sitting there with a torch all day long. You know what? Not a bad thing. Okay. Copper's funny because it'll get really hot. And as soon as it hits the water, it's dead cold again. So you can't solder. All right. So the goal is to get rid of as much of this water as you can. So you can get a good fitting. <laughs> If you can't drain the line, then you're going to have to use paper towels or a straw. Stick it in there, with, put your thumb on the top, and you can lift it out. Try to get the water a good three or four inches away from where you're going to be soldering. Oh, such clean, good-looking water, eh? <laughs> okay, next thing you want to do, obviously, you just want to clean the copper, all right? This is a great little tool here. It cleans inside or outside the pipe. Actually, get a bit of a rasp as well to make sure that there's no burrs. Okay. That's great. And then the other tool I like to use is this sanding cloth or emery cloth. Or... You just don't want to have any of the corrosion anywhere near your new work. Okay. This gives you the ability to bend around the pipe, get a good, clean piece of copper to work with. All right, nice and easy. Next step, get one of these. This is a half inch PEX female, okay? All plumbing fittings come in one of two options, male or female. Uh, amazing how simple it is with plumbing. Here we go. Once we get it scratched up, we are gonna wanna add a little bit of flux. And you can get the solder and paste in a kit with a brush. And you add a little bit to the fitting. And you wipe a little bit onto the pipe. Nice and easy. Set the fitting over the pipe. Okay, so I'm an idiot. I don't have a lighter on me today. Or my little click starter. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, it's not in my plumbing kit. These things happen. Um, so just turning on my stove. <laughs> uh, I've taken the paper towel, one end soaking wet, one end isn't, so 
After I light my torch, I'll just step it out on the ground and we'll be fine. Uh, this isn't what you do every day of the week, but hey, once this coil goes red, I know it's good to go. By the way, do you see the brand new kitchenette? That's right, we did a whole seven video series on how to take that old piece of junk kitchen that I had and transform it into something really pretty. You should check that out. We'll put video links in the description. Here we go, now we're going red. If you don't go red, it just smolders a lot. This way, it'll just ignite. Boom. Okay, done. All right, problem solved, let's go torch. Okay, here we go. Now, we don't need a whole lot of flame. I'm using map gas. This is great because it, it burns a lot hotter than the blue tanks, okay? The goal here is to create heat where you want the solder to end up. So we're looking to heat up this area of the brass. And then what I do is after I know it's hot, I'll see the, the, the surface change color and I'll just add the solder right to the side and it actually gets sucked up. That's the point purpose of the flux. It sucks the solder up all the way around the pipe and it makes it perfect every time. Now, if you don't want to set things on fire, consider where, what angle you're bringing your heat from, okay? And when you feel like you're ready, start from the other side of where the heat is. This will be the coldest part of the joint and if it sucks it up there, then you know you're good. There, I see the flux melting. I'm just going to touch the fitting. If nothing happens, it's not hot enough yet. There we go. Ready? And I'm just going to push it in. I know. Just do that on camera so that you can see how effective that works. Now, I know there's a little bit extra on the pipe and stuff, but look how fast it, it seals up. We've got to give this about 10 minutes to cool down, okay? And then we can stick our PEX on there. And that is how easy you can convert from copper to PEX. You can do this in about 10 minutes for each side, and then you're good to go. You can do the rest of your plumbing with brand new technology and never have to pull out a torch again. Cheers.